Hi, this is JP LaForest from Studio JPEG. In this video, I will show you the battery of tests that I impose to my lenses when I receive them. This helps out to find any defects that could be in the lens and also helps you understand better what are the limitations of the lens. So without further ado, I will run this Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens through the test again and give you an idea of what I do. So the first thing that I do is I remove the lens cap and I also remove the cap from the back. So I look in uh, with a light on top of me or something, I look the reflections and make sure that the lens surface is pristine. And I do the same thing with the back element. Then I hold it like this and I look through the lens. Depending on the specifications of the lens, you might have to hold it closer or further for the image to be in focus. But you should have a very clear, nice image when you look in it. Because basically what you see is what your sensor will be seeing. After that, I check the mechanical aspects of the lens and make sure that everything functions correctly. So I try the zoom and make sure the zoom doesn't creep back down. And the same thing if I zoom out and point it downwards, you want to make sure that your lens doesn't slowly fall down like that, unless it's supposed to. And if it's supposed to, at least it's better to know now than when you're out in the field and your lens just falls down and hits something. The next aspect that I check are the buttons on the side. So this one has an autofocus and manual focus switch. So I try to make sure it works and the same thing with the vibration control. After all of that is done, I also check that in autofocus, I check if I can turn the focusing ring smoothly or not. This lens does have full-time manual focus, so in autofocus mode, you can still move the focus ring with no problem. But if I go to the Canon kit lens and I put it on autofocus, then it's not going to let me turn it, and it's the motor that's preventing it. But if I put it in manual focus, then I can focus at it with no problems. So it's good to know how the lens behaves like that. After I'm done with those tests, I put the lens on the camera, and I make sure that everything works correctly. I try the autofocus, I try the vibration control, for that, I find it's better to do it in video mode, where you can very easily see the difference. And after all that, then I'm ready to get into the nitty gritty tests. So with a ruler or one of these things, I take a picture at 45 degrees going down, and I focus at 10 centimeters. You can use whichever number you like better and it gives a picture such as this. Here you can see that the focusing is exactly on the 10 centimeters, which means that this lens does not have any forward or back focusing problems. After that test, then I print out a chart from the internet, and it's an ISO 12233 chart. This one is from Stephen Weston from Cornell University, and it looks something like this. Just a bunch of lines and diagonals and circles and all sorts of weird shapes. I take pictures at different settings on the lens, so I'll try all the different apertures. I'll try it zoomed in, zoomed out, zoomed in the middle. Anywhere where you intend to use the lens, I recommend that you try the settings out with a test chart. This will help you find what's the sweet spot of the lens, where you get the best resolution, but you can also see other problems with the lens, such as chromatic aberration. 
in this example, you can see that there's a lot of purple in the picture, whereas the test chart was black. So just by looking at the picture, I know that this came from my Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens because it suffers from a lot of chromatic aberration. Whereas this next picture was taken from my 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, and you can see that it resolves much more details. And you can see by the numbers where you can still clearly see the lines. But you can see also that it's a much sharper lens and the details are either there or not there. It's not as fluid as the other lens. So it's always good to know how your lens behaves and how it captures images. After you're done with those tests, then at least you'll know that your lens is working properly. So if it was still under warranty and you see any problems that you're not satisfied with those test results, then I recommend that you check either with the manufacturer or the place where you bought the lens. And But if everything went correctly, and hopefully it does, then you know that your lens is fine. So the next aspect is to know how to use your equipment, which I will cover in a future video. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of my videos. Thank you very much. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.